Hey guys, so today I'm going to kind of do my why I decided to become vegan slash tips for becoming vegan video. I had wanted to do this for a really long time. I actually made a couple of videos and never really published it just because I think like everybody has one of these videos out there. Like you search YouTube and everybody has one. But I actually think that people are curious about living a lifestyle without meat and meat products and they're curious about, you know, how other people are doing and whether uh, they can do it themselves. So I, I thought that this would be a really like informative video and then you know you guys can learn a little bit about me. I'll kind of put like the tips that I've learned, foods that I've been eating um, right after uh, this video. So I have five questions here that um, all of my friends and a lot of people ask me when they find out, oh, you're vegan. Okay, so the first one is always, oh, well, why did you become vegan? And um, I actually did it for um, health reasons and really on behalf of my mom. A year and a half ago, my mom passed away from pancreobiliary cancer. And for me, I was just very adamant about, I'm going to be doing my research. Thought that I would be doing a disservice to my mom if I knowingly and willingly succumbed to the same type of disease that took her. It's strange to say, but kind of the best method to, I, I guess, combat cancer is really to not have it in the first place. Because once you have it, it becomes this whole other problem. And there's, you know, a lot of big time studies from, you know, major universities that kind of say that fruits and vegetables, a plan that avoids animal products is really kind of good for this stuff. I mean, certainly really good for your heart health, but it's really good for cancer. What I said to myself was, I'm gonna give myself two weeks, and if at the end of two weeks I you know, end up feeling horribly, or that it's just so difficult to do that I can't do it, then well, okay, like I will, I will decide from there. But what ended up happening at the end of two weeks was I realized that I didn't totally like meat that much anyways. I mean, there are definitely things that I miss. I felt really good. The foods are actually pretty delicious, so I could continued on and um, yeah and so it's been nearly a year and I'm you know I'm still feeling pretty good <laughs> okay so two kind of goes with number one is um, people want to know like how do you feel so um, I know a lot of people will tell me that after they've gone vegan that they like have a thousand percent more energy and they just wake up every day and it's like great and all of that uh, for me uh, the the effects were uh, a bit more subtle I will say that I didn't technically eat too much meat before anyways, but um, in terms of how I felt, one thing that I noticed that was huge for me was uh, digestion. I just never felt bloated, I never felt sick, like everything, like after I finished eating, I wouldn't, you know, suddenly go super tired and fall asleep. It was just like I was eating, it felt good, it felt normal going down, like everything felt okay, like I never felt you know, like sometimes how you'll eat like a big steak or or have a lot of ice cream or something and then your your stomach will be like bloated and you feel like, ugh, like you feel gross. I never have that feeling when I'm eating um, vegan food. Except, you know, when I have a lot of like oily stuff. Like sometimes I'll go to a place that's like, you know, like a vegan restaurant but they, you know, end up frying all of their food. Like it's delicious but sometimes it doesn't make you feel good. Which um, kind of brings me to another point is not all vegans are created equal like I want to say that if you are going vegan for health reasons it's as much avoiding animal products and not eating meat as it is to eat a lot more vegetables like that is actually the the panacea for a lot of kind of like health issues that people have you know doctors kind of recommend that you're supposed to have six fistfuls of fruits and vegetables each day and that's really how much like fiber how much different nutrients you're supposed to have for a really good body and if i used to count it myself i would say that i probably had like two three I, I don't know like maybe three servings of vegetables a day and I definitely didn't have six and I'm still kind of working on it right now because it's it is hard to have that much each day and it's something that you really have to monitor if you're if you're going for it obviously like sugar is vegan potato chips are vegan so you really have to watch out for those things too like just because a thing says it is vegan doesn't mean that it's you know necessarily good for you and I know that a lot of uh, people worry about you know vegan products being very processed or having a lot of like artificial ingredients in it and that's because I think that we're still at that stage where uh, we're trying to mimic 
a lot of the foods that we normally eat, but with um, vegan products. And so that kind of requires a lot of manipulation. But I also think that we are headed towards like an area where, you know, vegan foods, it can become more natural and more um, ingredients that you can actually recognize. Definitely after a year, I still feel like, yeah, like everything feels good. It just feels right. Like, and it's very evident because sometimes when I go on trips, I'll have to end up eating, you know, meats or, or milk or something. It's very evident when you are vegan for a while and then you eat something else what things upset you sometimes it's not me but sometimes like you know like dairy automatically kind of makes me feel like ugh, gross and i'm not i'm not lactose intolerant i've never been so it feels good and i i still recommend it <laughs> so the third question that people ask me is like uh, is it is it hard to become vegan um, I'm going to say that uh, the one, the biggest thing that is hard about being vegan is going out and eating. And I think a lot of even like vegetarians will say this, but there's like butter in everything. Like people will not tell you, but sometimes they'll just add a pat of butter here, a pat of butter there, like add a little bit of milk powder. Like you'll be so surprised. Like even going out to the grocery store and you're looking at like crackers or hummus, like sometimes randomly there will just be milk powder there. And that's just because, you know, milk provides really good flavor. It's like a nice fat, it tenderizes things. So that's really the only thing that's hard, but you know, conversely, it also <laughs> saves you a lot of money as well. Cause there's only certain, a certain number of restaurants that you can eat at but it, it also makes you um, a lot more conscious about the foods that you're eating like kind of asking the server oh like can you just double check that this doesn't have any like dairy or eggs or whatnot um, to it and um, I guess a good tip for when you're going to the restaurants is like I still think that people don't necessarily respect the fact that you tell them you're vegan like they take allergies a lot more serious seriously so sometimes like I'll go to the restaurant and I'll have to say like oh well there's a dairy allergy and I also don't eat eggs eggs are kind of like the other thing because otherwise it's just it's just you just look out for the meat right so um, that's kind of a good tip there is to sometimes you have to say that it's an allergy otherwise I I feel like they don't care about it as much that could just be me but other than that if you are someone who is curious about food and is willing to learn and shop around and try new things and try new flavors, um, then you're pretty much good. Nowadays, there are so many products and they're not even necessarily expensive. Like you can get, and I mean, definitely compared to meat, meat is super expensive. You can definitely find vegan options that are healthy and that kind of suit your budget and your needs. But you guys know I really like growing grocery shopping and finding what new products are out there. And there's like this whole other world. Like just like I like Japanese food and Korean food and Thai food, vegan food was something completely like I didn't know anything about it and it was so cool to go and shop and find out about it easy question number four is um do you do you miss eating meat do you miss anything so um like I said before I didn't eat necessarily too too much meat I really things that I really miss are um, I'm a big baker so I used to be a baker I'm a big baker I miss using eggs like if you don't have eggs in baking you'll be really surprised that I mean, the products are just, the, the results that you come up with are just different. Like eggs are amazing. Like you can substitute anything else. You can substitute like butter, you can substitute milk, but uh, there's no really good substitute for egg, especially if you are making things like, let's say like cream puffs or like a sponge cake. It's uh, it's amazing what the egg does. And so I miss, uh, I miss that. Um, the two things that I miss are one, Korean barbecue, and then two, this Peruvian charcoal chicken that I have um, around the corner and they always smell so, so good. And those are the two kind of meats that I miss, but also a uh, fish sauce. So I am a big Asian food fan, obviously. And I love like Thai food. I love Korean food, like kimchi usually has fish sauce in it or shrimp paste or something. So I miss a lot of like the seafoods and, and fish sauce that way, because I'm hoping that places like uh, Thailand actually does really good um, vegan products like if you sometimes if you frequent the Asian grocery stores there's a lot of like vegan products that are made in Thailand that and kind of making a vegan egg that functions the same way question five is um whether I plan on continuing is it you know uh, so it's been a year I definitely plan on continuing for the rest of my life and it, this is a little bit tough because I am in the food industry but you know for the most part I'll just like taste and, and not really eat it 
and the only time that I do eat um, animal products, and this is a rule for myself and it's different for everybody, but it's when I travel. Like I love food and the different flavors from different countries and just learning about flavors. Like I think it's so, so important to be able to experience all of that. And for me, because I like to kind of bring um, recipes from kind of around the world and, and veganizing it, it's important for me to actually know how the original texture and the original flavors taste like. And that in a way helps me when I'm kind of um, making or veganizing a dish. I know how the originals taste. It's for my curiosity too. It's kind of my rule for myself, but you know, you have to think about things that work for you. Okay, so uh, tips for what I have for you. So I thought that uh, today I would just do uh, stuff that are very basic. So kind of my big three in terms of meat substitutes um, at the very beginning. I don't have a package with me but um so the big three meat replacements are seitan which is made from uh wheat gluten and wheat gluten is just basically the the protein of of wheat so when you're able to take away all of the starch and all of the other extra stuff and just isolate that uh that protein molecule and you keep on stirring you'll actually end up getting like a really tough structure because it's just the protein of the wheat and that actually uh, is a really good substitute for meat because it, it kind of has that like slightly kind of chewy uh, texture and it's packed full of protein but of course for those who are gluten sensitive you might you know you'd have to defer to something else Second thing that I have never eaten before until I became vegan is tempeh. So tempeh is uh, usually it's made from like barley and rice or sometimes I've seen it uh, with soy. It is a powerhouse, like 20 grams of protein for like half a package of this. And I think that that's probably like half of your daily serving in terms of the protein that you need. But um, I think for those of you who like like rice or like grains, this is going to be a good uh, substitute for you. Um, it's it's a little bit strange at first because you're right, like it's like this big chunk of um, I think it's like fermented as well. It's like, just like this big chunk of like grains smushed together, and it has a slightly basic flavor to it, and I, I kind of like it. But what it's really good for is you can marinate it like you do with normal meat, like put some soy, put some you know maple syrup, or you know I I usually have honey, but I know you're not supposed to, but you know some soy. And, and some honey and just kind of like mix it together and um, you marinate this for you know an hour or so stick it in the oven you don't even have to fry it up or anything and it comes out you know really good I, I really like it and I usually put it in to like salads or like rice or basically anything that you would use meat in just marinate it the same way and then uh, give it a good bake Tofu, well, you know, I've done a ton of recipes with tofu already, but a thing that Becoming Vegan has kind of um, introduced me to uh, with tofu is just all of the different textures of it. So there's silken tofu, which is the softest. You have soft tofu, you have firm tofu, you have extra firm tofu, and then beyond that, if you go to the um, Asian supermarkets, like I've mentioned before, like the five spice tofu, they actually pre-press out all of the liquids so that you get like a nice, like super, super firm piece of tofu that you can, you know, marinate as you would like, and it definitely has that meaty texture to it. I think a lot of the times when you're transitioning over from eating meat to becoming vegan, you really do want those substitutes. Like, what can I have for this instead of this? And then later on, you know, as you go, you might choose to just like, oh, I don't really want the meat substitutes. I want, you know, just to have like legumes and, and beans and whatnot, and tempeh is still really good for it. Um, and then the last thing, I mean, I use this all the time, but this is a TVP, which stands for textured vegetable protein, and it's soy protein, actually. And there's also, you know, a ton of uh, proteins in this, not as much as in the tempeh, but I use this a lot when I'm looking for a minced meat substitute. Of course, if you go to the supermarket these days, there are, uh, there's like a ton. I show you guys all the time the brands that I like for like chicken, meatballs, um, um, ground meat. But TVP is something where, um, all you do is you rehydrate it in some water and it could be like chicken broth, it could be um, broth that you've seasoned and it takes up the flavor of that. Uh, the only thing with this is it's, it is a little bit dry just because there's not really fat in it. So sometimes what I'll do is um, with the broth, I'll also mix in a little bit of like coconut oil or oil in it and that really helps to kind of rejuvenate it some more. And I'll put these in like dumplings or anytime I'm having like a minced meat recipe, which a lot of Asian recipes have. Um, this is a really, a really good substitute for it. But yeah, definitely go and check out your local supermarkets. Like I know Target has this like plant-based protein section. Um, it's definitely a little bit different, but if you think about
about it in terms of like a health perspective and in terms of an environmental perspective and really like everything else. Just the fact that you have really good substitutes for meat that's like delicious and nutritious as well, like it's a good time to be trying like this lifestyle out and you know, the proof is really in the pudding. Like if at the end of two weeks, if at the end of a month, like you don't feel different or great, then you know, like you can, you can choose to change that up. But um, yeah, so anyways, I hope that that has um, helped you guys evaluate the lifestyle a little bit more and kind of learned a little bit more about me. And um, if you guys have any other questions about it, definitely, you know, comment down below. I'm, this is my first year doing it. I'm new to it as well. So any suggestions, any comments, I'm definitely welcomed. So until next time, I will see you guys again later. Bye.